Yo, 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 yo. All right, guys. We're going to be multiplying polynomials. So luckily for you, no key term. So that's nice. All right. Actually, I'm going to move the mic. There we go. So let's just get into it. So uh, products, multiplying. So we're finding the product of a monomial and a trinomial. Okay, so we're multiplying a monomial by a trinomial, and this is just like distributed property. Okay, so if I have negative 4x to the third power times x squared plus 3x minus 4, this is just me multiplying and distributing this negative 4x to the third power to every single term inside the parentheses. So if there's five terms, I would have to distribute it to five different terms. Now, a big thing. Whenever we multiply numbers with exponents, we still have to follow our rules of exponents. So, like for example, I'm multiplying the whole numbers and then I'm multiplying the exponents. So what I mean by that is negative 4 times, this is like a 1, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. But now i got to do x third times x x to the third power times x squared. I don't multiply the exponents here. Okay, whenever we multiply, it's like saying I have three x's being multiplied, I have two x's being multiplied, or well, our rules of exponents tell me I add those to give me x to the fifth. So the big thing when we're multiplying exponents, we just add them up. Okay, so multiply the whole numbers, or the coefficients, and then add the exponents. So negative four times three is negative 12, x to the third times x is x to the fourth. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. x to the third, there's nothing here, so that's just going to be x to the third. And I'm done. Nothing else to do. My, my, I am in standard form. I cannot combine like terms because it's fifths, fourths, and thirds. Oh, I'm sorry, to the fifth power, to the fourth power, to the third power, so I'm all done. So go ahead and try this one. Okay, same process. See how you do So I'm going to distribute negative 2 times 1, that's negative 2, x to the 4th, because 2 plus 2 is 4. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, and this is going to be x to the 3rd, because 2 plus 1 is 3. And then this is going to give me negative 8x squared. This is the constant, so I just tack it on. Whoop. And I'm done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at multiplying a binomial by a binomial. So now I have two terms being multiplied by two terms instead of just one being multiplied by a bunch. So this is very similar to multiplying just whole numbers. So if I were to do 15 times 18, the way we've always done it is a lot of people break this down to 15 times 18. Well, this is 8 times 15, right? And then this is 10 times 15. So what we can do is one way to multiply these whole numbers is we can break it down into this table right here. And we can just take this, this is 10 plus 8, right? This is 10 plus 5, so these are the same thing. And so I'm multiplying 10, I'm multiplying by 8, multiplying by 10, multiplying by 8. And I can actually do my multiplication this way by filling in these boxes. 10 times 10 is 100, because that's 10 times 10. I can also do 10 times 8, that's 80. 5 times 10 is 50, and then 5 times 8 is 40. And then I just add up all of these boxes together, okay? So this is 150, 190, this is 270. Now, if I did 15 times 18, I really am doing the exact same thing. I'm doing eight times five, which is what we just did, which is 40. I'm then doing eight times, this is 10, not eight times one. And then, so eight times one, that's plus four is 120. This is 10 times five. So that was the 10 times five we did here. Okay, 10 times 5 is, or 1 times 5 is 5, and then I also have 1. And I still get 270. But we're multiplying the same things, so it's just setting it up a little bit differently. Well, we can set up polynomials in the exact same way. So this is two terms. This is, again, 10 plus 5 times 10 plus 8, because this is 15 times 18. Oh, this is the same way, so I set it up as a chart. This is x plus 8, this is x plus 5. Well, so now I'm just going to multiply each box. So I'm going to multiply x times x, which is x squared. x times 8 is just 8 times x, which is 8x. 5 times x is 5x. And then 5 times 8 is 40. Now i got to add these all up. Well, I can't combine... I, 
can only combine my like terms here. They're all like terms because they're all constant. But here, I have x squared, can't combine with anything. 5x and 8x makes 13x. And then 40. I'm all done. So I was able to multiply two different binomials just by making sure I multiply everything. Now, another way to look at this is we could use distributive property. So here I have, again, two binomials being multiplied. And it is essentially distributive property. So what I need to do is distributive properties when we just take whatever is being multiplied by the parentheses, we multiply by everything. But now I have two things inside those parentheses. So that means I got to do really the distributive property twice. I'm taking every term inside my front parentheses and multiplying it by everything inside the second set of parentheses because this is all being multiplied by this. So what I mean is I'm taking this first term 2x and I'm going to distribute that by multiplying 2x by everything in the other parentheses. So I can do 2x times x. So I'm multiplying 2x by x to get 2x squared because it's just 2 times 1 is 2, x times x is x squared. Then I got to do 2x times negative 5. Well, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And I bring the x with me because this doesn't have an x. Now I have to do the exact same thing, but I'm doing distributive property with the second term by everything inside the parentheses. So I'm doing 4 times x, which is positive 4x. And then I'm doing 4 times negative 5, which is negative 20. So I did distributive property twice. Now I can just get to combine all my like terms. And when I combine all my like terms, it's just the negative 10x and the 4x to make negative 6x. 2x squared, negative 20, and I'm done. So there's my final simplified answer. So think distributive property, but now you're just doing it twice because you have multiple terms inside the parentheses that are being multiplied. This essentially is doing the distributive property. We just didn't realize it. We're taking this x and I'm multiplying it by x. I'm taking this x and I'm multiplying it by 8. I'm taking this 5 and I'm multiplying it by x. That's this one right here. And I'm taking this 5 and I'm multiplying it by 8. That's this one down here. So the table works if you like that format, or we could just do a distributive property this way. Okay. So try this one on your own. Set it up as a table. Set it up as a distributive property. Um, actually, you know what? Try setting it up as a distributive property and just see how it goes. So I'm going to do 5x times 2x and then 5x times 1. Well, 5x times 2x, 5 times 2 is 10. x times x is x squared. 5x times 1, well, that's just 5x. I do the same thing, but now i got to do it with negative 4. Negative 4 times 2x is negative 8x. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And then I combine my like terms, and I'll be all done. So that's going to be 10x squared. This is going to give me negative 3x minus 4. Okay, so now for something like this, now I have a trinomial being multiplied by a binomial. So there, let me rewrite this in a different way. You could really do it in two ways. You could use a table, or you could set it up with still distributive property. It doesn't really matter. Now, if I did the table, I'd have 3x and 4 on the top or the side. It doesn't matter what order we set it in. I have x squared, I have 2x, and I have negative 1. So now the table, because it's, it's a 3 by 2, I have six things that I'm actually multiplying now, right? So if I did a table, I have x squared times 3x, well, 3 times 1 is 3, x squared times x is x to the third. x squared times 4 is just 4x squared. So I'm done with my x squared. 2x times 3x, 2 times 3 is 6 x times x is x squared. 2x times 4 is 8x. And then I have negative 3x here, and then I have negative 4. And now I can just combine my like terms. So if I combine my like terms, I'll have 3x to the third power. I have 2x squared here. I have 6x and 4x squared, so that's going to be plus 10x squared. Negative 3x, 8x, that's plus 5x. Minus 4. There's my final answer. I also could have done this with, by using distributive property, but one little trick for distributive property is one cool thing about multiplying, it does not matter what order you multiply in, right? So actually what I would have done here is I would have taken, ah, that's not going to work. I would have taken this 3x plus 4. I'm going to move this to the front here. Let me show you why. 
because when I multiply, you can do it in any order you want. So what I did is I just took the second product and put it in front, and now I can just do distributed property. I can do it in any order. This is gonna, I think, to me, make it a little bit easier, a little bit less work. So I can do 3x times everything inside the parentheses. So 3x times x squared. Well, again, that's what I did here, right? That's 3x to the third power. 3x times 2x, that's gonna give me 6x squared. 3x times negative one, that's negative 3x. Now I can combine that with four times everything inside that second set. Four times x squared, that's four x squared. I'll curl up here. Four times two x, that's eight x. And then four times negative one is negative four. If you notice, all of these values match all of these values. Just a little bit different order. But this is where we would then just combine our like terms. So I can combine 6x squared and 4x squared to make 10x squared. Those are now gone. I can combine negative 3x, positive 8 to make 5x. And then my negative 4 and then my 3x cubed don't have any like terms. And that's it. I got the same answer, two different ways to get there. Okay, I don't care how you do it. Make a choice. Solve this one. See how you do. Okay, so... This is what you get when you multiply 5i by everything by negative 2 by everything. So then I got to combine my like terms. I only have one y to the third power. So that's gone. Look at my x squares here, my y squares here. 15 and negative 8 make positive 7. y squared, those are gone. Negative 5, negative 6 makes negative 11. y, and then I sub the positive 2. So there's your final answer for that one. Okay. Finally, you're going to have to use this to solve maybe some geometry problems or other word problems by using this concept. So here I'm trying to find the area of a rectangle. So to find the area of a rectangle, I just do length times width. Well, I have a length, I have a width. So I need to do 2.4x plus 4 times x plus 0 0.5. So I'm multiplying this side by this side. So that's just what I'm going to do, 2.4 times x. Well, sorry, 2.4x times x, that's going to give me 2.4x squared. I also then need to do 2.4 times 0.5. Okay, so that's giving me what's half of 2.4, so I'm going to multiply these. That's going to give me 1.2. The x stays along. Okay, let's switch colors here. That's a 4. It looks like a y, doesn't it? Felix. So that's 4 times x. That's 4x. 4 times 0.5 is 2. So I get 2.4x squared. Combine these guys, that's going to be plus 5.2x plus 2. And that's all. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, things to remember add the exponents, do not multiply. Okay, common mistake. All right, independent practice, get it done. And if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Thanks for watching. Good to see you.